My name is Mark Swanick, and welcome to my video on the steel framing square, also known as the Carpenter's Calculator. The reason I'm producing this video is because the art of using the steel framing square is slowly fading away, and I'd like to keep these skills alive and resurrected for future generations of carpenters. The first layout skill that I'm going to demonstrate in this video is known as the step out method, and this is used for laying out rafters when roof framing. The step out method requires no calculations for length, it require, does not require the use of a tape measure either. It will be wholly done with the framing square. For this demonstration, the scenario is we have a building width of 4 foot 10, also known as the building span. If we divide that number in half, and that's so that the peak of the roof meets in the middle of the building, that measurement would be 2 foot 5. That measurement is known as the rafter run, which is equal to half of the building span. The roof slope I'm going to use for this is a 512 roof slope. For clarity, I've added masking tape to the edges of my framing square, and you'll note that I'm holding 5 inches on the tongue of the framing square, and on the body of the framing square, I'm holding the 12 inches because this roof slope is a 512 roof slope. So now we'll begin the step out method. To begin the step out method for a rafter layout, I would start with holding my 5 inches at the top end of the rafter and the 12 inches on the same edge of our material. And I start by laying out a pencil mark and marking it on the 5 inch side of the framing square. This cut would be known as a plumb cut because it will be vertical when the rafters are installed. Now, to mark out the first step, this is going to take two steps plus another five inches because our rafter run is two foot five. So I mark out our first step at 12 inches. Then I take my framing square where I mark the 12 inches. I now move the five inch mark on the framing square to the 12 inches. Now I'm going to lay out my second step of 5 and 12. I mark the second step on the rafter here. This now gives me two feet of run. I had 12 inches of run here. The second step gives me two feet of run. Now I need to add five inches of balance to get to the edge of the building. So now I would hold 5 and 12 again, holding 5 where I marked my second step. Now, to make up the balance of the run of the building, along the bottom of the blade, I would mark the 5 inches here. So I mark this 5 inches. That now gives me 1 foot of run, plus another step is 2 feet of run, plus 5 inches, giving me the building run, or the rafter span, of 2 foot 5. So once I've laid out my 2 steps, plus my 5 inches, at this point here is where I would draw a plumb cut holding 5 and 12 our roof slope and I would draw this plumb line. This plumb line represents where the rafter will sit on the wall and we're going to create a bird's mouth at this location in a minute. Now if we have a 16 inch projection of our roof at this point I'm already holding 5 and 12 so at this point I would mark 12 inches of projection. Now I still need to make up another 4 inches of projection. So I move my 5 and 12, move my 5 to that one step of 12 inches, ensure that I'm holding 5 and 12 on the edge of my board, and then I mark the 4 inches, which is the balance of the 16 inches that I need. At that point, I will draw a plumb cut. So I slide my framing square to pick up that pencil mark. At this point, I now put a, put a plumb cut here. Now, with the tongue being an inch and a half wide, if we have a fascia board that's going to be an inch and a half wide, and it's included in the 16 inch projection, we want to take that off. So all I have to do is simply put my tongue of my square on the correct slope at 5 and 12, slide it to pick up the pencil mark on this side, and then I mark on the opposite side of the tongue, there, therefore it's taking off the inch and a half for our subfascia. 
Now the next trick I'm going to show you with the framing square is how to determine the depth of your bird's mouth. We have a plum cut here. Now if I measured this and I divided this by three because we normally want our bird's mouth to be one-third the depth of our plum cut here, then I might be dealing with fractions. So the easy way of doing this is picking any number easily divisible by three because we want to break this line up into thirds. So because I have 12 inches marked on my square, I'm going to use 12 inches. And if I divide that by three, that would be four inches. So I want to come down two thirds of this line or up one third. So the trick here, I hold zero on one side of the board. I hold my 12 inches on the other side. Two thirds of 12 inches is eight. So now I slide my square until I pick up the eight inch mark on my plumb line. At this location right here is eight inches. That eight inches is two thirds of 12, which also gives me two thirds of this line. This will not ensure that this line is square to the plumb line and it needs to be to be a level cut. So I've marked my two thirds of my plumb cut here. I now hold my 12 inches on this side, my five inches on the opposite side. I slide my square along until I pick up that pencil mark. And now I can draw a line square to my plumb line and that will lay out my, my bird's mouth. So now I have a bird's mouth laid out that will be down two-thirds the plum cut of the common rafter. It's a very simple trick and it works very, very well. So now you can see I've cut the rafters and installed them in place. So again, to recap it, there's my first step which lines up with my 12 inches of run. My second step my addition of five inches to get to the two foot five run of the building. I have also included a rafter tail for the projection of 16 inches. That was one step of 12 plus four inches. And then I took off the inch and a half fascia. I used that rafter as a template. I cut a second one. And now you can see that we have two rafters completed.